ever tried, ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. I had so many dreams of where I wanted to go, who I wanted to be, and what I wanted to do. You have your own story to tell. Theater companies I wanted to start with classmates, movies I wanted to be in, directors I wanted to work with, stories I needed to tell. I packed the life that I knew with socks and a toothbrush into my backpack and I slept on couch after couch after couch after couch at friends' apartments in New York until I wore out their rent-paying roommate's welcome. I didn't want a day job. I was an actor. I was a writer. I had to get a day job. I dusted pianos at a piano store on Ludlow Street for five months. I worked on the property of a Shakespeare scholar for a year pulling weeds and removing bees' nests. I went on unemployment once, but for not for long. I couldn't handle the guilt. Eventually, I was able to pay rent for a spot on the floor of an apartment on the Lower East Side, but my roommate had a breakdown and disappeared. I helped hang paintings at galleries, paintings that inspired, inspire you to think, I could do that. <laughs> And then, finally, after two years of job and couch surfing, I got a job. In application processing. As a data enterer at a place called Professional Examination Services. And I stayed for six years. Six years. From the age of 23 to 29. Well, they loved me there. I was funny. I smoked in the loading docks with the guys from the mailroom and we shared how hungover we all were. I called in sick almost every Friday because I was out late the night before. I hated that job and I clung to that job. Because of that job, I could afford my own place. My dream of running a theater company with my friend and fellow Bennington graduate Ian Bell had died. I had only the one window. I myself could not look out the window. It was, it was quite high. No acting agent. When I was 29, I told myself the next acting job I get, no matter what it pays, I will from now on, for better or worse, be a working actor. But something good happened. I got a low-paying theater job in a play called Imperfect Love, yeah. which led to a film called 13 Moons with the same writer, which led to other roles, which led to other roles. And I've worked as an actor ever since. I didn't know that would happen. At 29, walking away from data processing, I was terrified. 10 years in a place without heat, six years at a job I felt stuck in. Maybe I was afraid of change. 
are you? But this made me very hungry, literally. I couldn't be lazy. I couldn't be. And so at 29, in a very long last, I was in the company of the actors and writers and directors I'd sought out that first year, that first day after school. I was, I am, by their sides. Raise the rest of your life to meet you. Don't search for defining moments because they will never come. The moments that define you have already happened and they will already happen again. And it passes so quickly so please, bring each other along with you. You, you just get a bit derailed. But soon something starts to happen, trust me. A rhythm sets in. Just try not to wait until, like me, you're 29 before you find it. And if you are, that's fine too. Some of us never find it. But you will. I promise you. You are already here. You'll find your rhythm or continue the one you have already found. Don't wait until they tell you you are ready. Get in there, sing. The world might say you are not allowed to yet. I waited a long time out in the world before I gave myself permission to fail. Please, don't even bother asking. Don't bother telling the world you are ready. Show it. Do it. What did Beckett say? Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. We burn very brightly. Please don't ever stop. The world is yours. Treat everyone kindly and light up the night. Maybe I was afraid of change. Are you?